Okay, so when do we cover Harp? Um, we will be getting into Harp. Uh, it will be next hour. Yeah, definitely. We'll be getting into it next hour. Okay, I have some info on that, too. Okay. Um, let's see here. I mean, if you wanted to cover it now, we can. Uh, I just wanted to get into a little bit of the what this article or what this document was talking about as far as what they were planning on doing in regards to uh, spraying, what they were going to use to spray. So... Well, Darko, you have so much information, and thank you again for getting all this together for the show, man. Thanks a lot. You should just research the effects of blah, 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 respiratory illnesses, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All this information, at least for me, it really makes you think, especially when you have a lot of respiratory problems and, you know, asthma, allergies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I mean, even our local TV station actually talked about this strange fiber looking substance in our air conditioner uh, filters but it, it really does make you think and it is thought provoking information mm-hmm. and I kind of speak from personal experience because the, the more I go outside the more in the summertime I try to cut grass I mean I have allergies but my point is it seems to get worse every year and, and now it's almost all year round it's like you just can't win yeah I mean I don't I I tend to not really, not that I'm a total hermit, but I, I try to not really go outside as much, to be honest with you. It's just, uh, when I, I've noticed that when I did, um, I'd say probably before I really discovered the whole chemtrails, I discovered them in 2008, but I still went outside all the way up until 2009, but last year I kind of stayed indoors for the most part. You know, in 2006, I was having stuff where I was in a different area from where I'm at now. And I'd be outside, and I'd do my do my jogging or walking my dog, and and I was starting to get all kinds of crazy rashes and stuff on my exposed skin. It'd yeah. be on my neck, it'd be on my arms, you know. Yeah, exactly. I know what you mean. Well, I want to share a personal experience with you. I have a brother that was diagnosed with COPD, and I asked him, "Well, how did you get COPD?" And the doctor said, "Pollution and environmental variables." Hmm. That's a pretty uh, nice little diagnosis, huh? That leaves it open to about anything. But what he does for a living is, is not exactly construction, but he does run cranes and heavy machinery, but outside in the open, exposed to the environment. Yeah, but he works outside most. Exactly. And if my brother ever had to be near any, any dust particles or, or harmful particles, he would wear one of those certified masks. But like I said, his lungs are pretty much damaged um, beyond repair now. And, and, and again, you know, he would be careful if he had to deal with uh, extreme environments, obviously. Yeah. But anyway, we're going to go to a break real quick and we'll be right back. Forty-six minutes after the hour, we'll be right back. You're listening to The Cutting Edge. Stay tuned for more stimulating talk radio after this. Continuous exceedingly unstoppable march. Only the fevered speculation of where it came from is spreading faster than the illness. Igor Ogrodnev reports tonight from Western Ukraine. One and a half million have been infected. Tens of thousands more fall ill every day. More than 300 people, many of them with no previous health problems, are dead. There is a high population density and internal migration in the Ukraine, and this creates a greater risk for our country. But the rapid spread of disease has given rise to rumors finger-pointing and conspiracy theories. Doctors in Western Ukraine have told of post-mortems where the lungs of the victims were said to be as black as charcoal, comparing the symptoms to the Spanish flu which wiped out millions in 1918. Others even believe a pneumonic plague is to blame for the high death toll. 
Another theory causing a frenzy on the internet links the outbreak to deliberate mass spraying of chemicals by planes over Kiev. Local newspapers reported hundreds of eyewitness accounts suggesting this. And then there are those who claim the epidemic was engineered by pharmaceutical companies. When you look at what's happening in Ukraine, and, and the fact is that this may be a mutation of H1N1, autopsies being performed are showing that the victim's lungs are pitch black. The research uh, in H1N1, uh, we can trace it back to basically, it should be called the Jurassic flu. Uh, the DNA of a woman who died of the 1918 Spanish flu, the 1918 pandemic, was recovered from the, uh, her corpse. Uh, her, her, the DNA was used to recreate this virus. The World Health Organization denies that this is anything but ordinary swine flu, but warns that the situation remains critical. This is a virus which everyone is susceptible to, and we don't know in whom it will cause severe disease and in whom it might just cause mild disease. So everyone needs to take a precaution against this disease. The government response has come under attack. No vaccinations were given before the outbreak, and critics say not enough Tamiflu was stockpiled. Now the antiviral drugs have arrived, but there are uncertainties about who's being given access to them. People in the streets say that ahead of the presidential election, politicians have used the crisis to boost their profile or shoot down their rivals. There's one piece of advice for the government. Stop confusing the population. Meanwhile, in western Ukraine, whole hospitals have been converted into emergency wards. Stefania Petrikovic began to feel unwell one day two weeks ago. Soon she could barely breathe and had a temperature of almost 40. I was nearly dead when I was delivered here. They put me on drip and I don't even remember what happened afterwards. Authorities say infection rates have stabilized for the moment, despite what the rumor mongers say. And the streets are full again. Here in Lviv, people are acting as if the threat has receded. Unlike a few weeks ago, hardly anyone is wearing protective masks. But the scope of the swine flu problem remains astonishing. Officials say familiarity with the virus precautions is breeding complacency and warn that new waves of disease are imminent. Igor Gorodnev, RT. <laughs> You are listening to The Cutting Edge, live every Saturday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Welcome back, Darko. Oh, thank you, Delta. Yeah, that's some interesting stuff. How'd you like the clip? Yeah, that was good. <laughs> you like how it's conspiracy theories on exactly. the internet? Exactly. They crazy. always do that. That's frenzy on the internet. Because <laughs> if it's on the internet, it's not true. Right. Hey, wait a minute now. Careful. We're on the internet. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I'm. I'm gonna. Um, we're gonna get into harp. Uh, like we said, next hour. Uh, segments but uh, we're gonna we're just gonna fly through the some of these health effects that um, have been reported um, as far as either Morgellons or some of the stuff that's in here uh, reportedly such as barium and the silver iodide well we know that they put the silver iodide in this cow seeding um, little concoction and according to um, the video that we heard earlier and what I have down here with it the uh, down in Louisiana, they tested, uh, after spraying, they tested this water, this rainfall, and it had large amounts of, high amounts of barium in it. So, uh, let's just look at the health effects, and then we'll go back to um, just what this little white paper that the government was uh, um, talking about in regards to what their plans were. Um, so, it says here, um, we have health effects, uh, silver iodide. Uh, what is silver iodide poisoning? People have complained about certain, um, you know, health issues that they have, and they go to the doctor, and there's really no reason for it. They just say what? Delta? Environmental? Uh, variables. 
variables. So yeah. let's let's find out what those uh, what those variables might be. Uh, silver iodine poisoning. Accumulations in the soil vegetation and surface runoff have not been large enough to measure above natural background. In a 1995 environmental assessment of the Sierra Nevada of California and a 2004 independent panel of experts, um, in an overview, overview only is presented in the executive summary of this research in Australia, confirm these earlier findings. Weather Modification Association uh, position statement on the environment.